Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Hallelujah. Today we have gathered together to uplift the name of Yahweh Yahshua and all the tough things he has done for us. This is a day of memorial unto Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. So we're going to start off with a song. We're going to ask our whole Shekinah if she'll lead us in a song. And then we'll have prayer by our whole this year. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the name of Yahweh. Hallelujah, way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Most Kodesh. Yahweh, our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Come before you today. Yes, In the mighty name of Yahshua Hamashiach. Thank you, most of all, for the dawn that was shed. Yes, yes, That we could be reconciled unto you, Father. Without the shedding of that blood. Yes, There is no remission of sin. Thank you today that our sins have been remitted. And Father, we just ask you to unite us together in the bond of the love, Father. Keep us, Father, walking in your word, Father. Yes, we ask you this day, don't let any kind of sin or iniquity have dominion over us, Father. Yes, yes, we thank you, Father, for being so close to us, yes, Father. Yes. Without you, we can do nothing. Without yes, you, we can do nothing. Yes, this is yes, the yes. only way we want to walk, Father, yes, and that's yes, according yes, to your word. Yes, we ask you, Father, to bless these sisters that's worked so hard yes, to make this come together and to be yes, as yes. Uh, success and be as beautiful yes, as it is. Yes, we yes, ask you, yes. those of us who are coming, Father, we ask you to help yes, our hearts to be appreciative yes, yes, the things yes, and the hard yes, work that you yes, have. Yes, we thank you, Abba yes, Yahweh, yes, for yes, all yes, We ask you to bless the children yes, and bless yes, every word that come forth today. Yes, in the yes, mighty yes, name of Yahshua, we bless you. In Yahshua's name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 This um, afternoon, we're talking about the bed of prayer. Hallelujah. And Yah's bed is a place of prayer. Yes. Hallelujah. But we're talking about a Pacific bed today. Our Ruah. Yes. Hallelujah. Our body, where Yahshua should dwell. Hallelujah. Yes. And his house should be, we should pray in season and out. Yes. We can't get weary in well doing. Hallelujah. And we must be examples for our young daughters to follow. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. But before I begin, uh, we'd like to hear from Mima Sabea. She's going to give us a, a few encouraging words to Hallelujah. strengthen our legs this young. Hallelujah. Total yah. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom Mima. When Ima mentioned to me this morning, I said, Ima, I'm not ready, but I'm ready. Hallelujah. You know, the scripture tells us to be all ready at Hallelujah. all time. How many of us don't be ready to eat? Who don't be ready to eat? Nobody, huh? Okay, he said be ready to hear. 
the word of Yah at all times. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. So the word came to me the other night, flat. That's the word that came to me. One word, flat. And flat, it means to give praise without being sincere. It means insincere or excessive praise to one. It means excessive com compliment and a false praise. So we don't want to do no false, we don't want to come to nobody and do a false praise, no time. My first scripture is coming out of 5, Tehillim 5, 9. Now it says, because there's no truth in my enemy's mouth, all they have inside them is destruction. Their throats are open grave. He said their tongues are slick. They're slick with talk. So we don't want to be a flatterer. Hallelujah. Bless you, Yah. To hear him, 78, 36. Praise Yah, bless Bless you, Abba. Hallelujah. It says, but whenever y'all killed them, they went after him. They would not turn and earnestly search, search for Yahweh. Now this is a flatterer, how a flatterer operates. Hallelujah. Search me, Yahweh. I don't want to be a flatterer. Miss Lee 29.5. I'm talking about the flatterer. It can be flatter, flatter. Flattering, flattery, and flatter word. Miss Lee 29, 5. Hallelujah, way. Bless you, Yahweh. It said, people, hear me, people who flatter their friends spread out a net for their feet. Did y'all hear that? Hallelujah. People who flatter their friends spread out a net for their feet. Hallelujah, bless you, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yeah. The next scripture is Daniel 11:32. Hallelujah, Yahweh. It said, "By deceitful means, he will corrupt those who violate a covenant. But the people who acknowledge their Abba will stand strong and will act." Praise Yahweh. Bless you. Yahweh. My next scripture is uh, Romans 16, 18, and it says, people like that, talk about the flatterer, people like that aren't serving our Abba. They are serving their own feelings. They deceive their lab of innocent people with what kind of talk? Good talk. Hallelujah. No, not good talk. They deceive people with what kind of talk? What kind of talk the flatterers do? In the smooth, okay then, Hallelujah. they deceive the hearts of many with smooth talk and flattery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. My last scripture is coming from Jude 16 verse. Hallelujah. Yahweh. And it says, these people are fault-finding grumblers. These people are fault-finding grumblers. They are living according to their own desires. Bless you, yeah. They're living according to their own desires. He said they speak arrogant words and they show partiality to people when they want a favor for them. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 You don't want to be flattered. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. Because someone is flattering all the time, they're just a that's deceitful right. person. They're not walking in toward yeah. truth. Hallelujah. So that's why when you truly pray. Commit your activities. Everything that you do, you commit it unto Almighty Yahweh. And you don't have to worry about that. You know, you do that when you're in sin. And then when you come to Almighty Yahweh and you learn how to walk in truth, you will abandon those things. Nobody's going to be your friend because you flatter, flatter them. True. That's what liars do. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And can I tell you, when you think you got a friend, they're really not your friend. Flattery does not get you free. It gets you in. 
you want somebody that's going to tell you the truth. Yes. Because the truth will not set you, but it will make, make you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Totally, y'all. So we'll start talking about the bed of prayer. Why do we pray? Really, why do we pray? And anybody like to respond on that one? Why do we pray? Well, as I was lying on my couch this morning, I got up a little early, and I was lying there on the couch, and that's the first thought came to me. Why do we pray? To show a commitment unto Almighty Yahweh that we truly, truly need Him. Now, He doesn't need us, but we need Him. So we have to make a commitment. So that's our connection with Almighty Yahweh, that we pray daily, we pray every day. Yes. We pray all day long without ceasing. Yes. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Isaiah 56 and 7, it says, Even them will I bring to my Kodash mountain and make them joyful in my bed, my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their Zabak offering shall be acceptable unto my altar. For my bed shall be called a bed of prayer. Yes. To feel our for all people. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah, Yahweh. Yeah. So when even when we enter into the bay of Almighty Yahweh, we must be set apart. Mm -hmm. We must be able to lift up clean hands yes. before yes. Almighty Yahweh. Yes. So when we go into the bay, it's not a place to play. It's not a place to play with your children. It's not a place to be thinking about what you're gonna eat next. It's a place because you're going in to hear from Almighty yes. Yahweh. Yes. You want Yahweh to examine. Not me. your sister, but to examine oh, me. Yes, I do. And as we walk in truth, I understand more and more how really the world, or also the people that say they know you, they don't examine themselves. They come to examine you. Mm -hmm. You. you. That's who they come to examine. Mm -hmm. They can be doing everything evil under the sun, but they want to point out your flaws. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The people of y'all should be set apart in our thinking, our dress, our mannerism, the way we prepare our foods. We don't eat unclean. We live by the Torah. Hallelujah. So everything that we do should be set apart. It's not like the world. I hope Rose made it home safely. She said, I hadn't been walking this way long. She said, but even just being there with you all for that short time. She said, even the way I dress, she said, I had a little money, so I went out and bought me some more clothing. She said, long dresses. She said, even when I walked in the store, everybody's looking at me. They're looking at me. I said, because you don't dress like everybody else. You don't have your breasts out. You're not trying to show somebody you got it going on. You're not trying to accent your buttocks. Your hair is not, you know, all like, it's not purple, green, and orange. So you're so different that they're other, you look strange. We look strange. But I said she dressed plain, told her y'all plain. Because Almighty Yahweh is plain. He's old fashioned. He changes now. He said, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So we don't want to pattern our lives after the world. Our bodies are for our itch. We cover ourselves. You cover your neckline. You cover your arms. Wherever you are, that's where Yah is. If He made the darkness, He sees everything. He sees everything. Hallelujah. So he said, well, I'm just relaxing in my house. I'm going to put my skinny jeans on. Yah's in every place. He sees you in your skinny jeans. He sees the cellulite and everything. So it's not about that. It's about you can be cold dash wherever you are. You should be. The way you think should be cold dash. And you should cover yourself. You should keep your head covered. You never know when you're going to have to pray. You're in an accident. You say, okay, what? Oh, well, I don't have a head covering. What do I do? How, how would you pray? Is he going to hear me? You're not sure, are you? So keep your head covered. Mr. When you're at home and you're relaxing, can I tell you, sometimes I get up, if I go to bed, I don't have my nightcap on. I pull a sheet over my head and I pray. I pull a sheet right over my head and I pray. So I told y'all that we must understand. You have to hear the messenger. That's the only way you can understand. Not by reading. Reading doesn't come by, understanding doesn't come by reading. Understanding comes by hearing the messenger. Hallelujah. I told you, Another scripture from Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 37. It says, you, O Yahweh, did choose this bed. Hallelujah. 
to be called your name and to be a bed of prayer and petition for your people. Hallelujah. So we, we send out petitions every day to Almighty Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Do you expect Him to answer you? Really, when you pray, you don't expect an answer from Almighty Yahweh. Mm -hmm. You do. That's why yes. you pray. True. You know, you don't know what to do. You, you know, you can't handle the situation. Things I don't worry about when I pray, I leave it there. Mm -hmm. And I wait. I don't rush nothing. I just wait. Can I tell you every time you wait, y'all will answer. When they say, he don't come when you want to, but he comes on time. When he comes, it's on time. Not in our time, but it's Yah's time. And he will answer, and it's on time. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It says, what house are we talking about as of right now? Mm -hmm. Is it the house of prayer? Is it the body that we're in? Yakahan 2 and 21. It says, but Yahshua spoke of the Bayat, Ha Mishdash, of his body. So I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. It says, and what agreement has the bed of Yah with idols? For you are the bed of the living of our Yahweh. As Yah has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their Abba, yes. and they shall be my people. Yes. So can Yah dwell, Yahweh Yahshua, can they dwell in an unclean temple? No. no. They no. cannot. No. Can bitter and sweet dwell in the same no. vessel? No. no. Can cursings and blessings no. come out the same vessel? No. no. Cannot. So what you are, you're going to speak it out of your mouth. That's the truth. If you talk about foolishness all the time, then you're a foolish person. True. True. Yes. If you practice fornication, you're a wicked and corrupt person. Yes. True. If you practice righteousness, then you are a righteous vessel. Sweet and bitter can't come out the same vessel. True. It can. It cannot. If everything come out my mouth is filthy, because somebody pissed me off, then I'm filthy. It's just a wicked vessel. And we have to acknowledge how we are and truth. Why, why do you think y'all gives us truth? For us to continue in our old ways, but for us to shoot, to turn. Yes. We must turn from our evil ways, yes. from the ways that mama brought you up and daddy brought you up. We must turn. True. Well, I don't like this and I don't like that. Let me pick, let me pick a little bit of this out. No, you've got to take all of this truth. Yes. It may be bitter going down, but when it gets in the bed, it'll be sweet. Mm -hmm. We must learn how to walk in truth by just hearing the messenger. Mm -hmm. When I give anybody any advice, I say, you must hear the messenger. Not my words, not mine. Hear the messenger. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that keeps me safe. I hear the messenger. And then I obey. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I don't like what he said. Well, that can't be to me that he have to go that way. Because I got sisters out there. No. I say, yeah, whatever your truth say, that's for me. Yes. Yes. No matter who the messenger, he may be just talking to one person in particular, but it's still for the house. Yes. Yes. It's for us all to receive and walk. Yes. You never know yes. what trial is coming your way. Yes. So we must say that I am weak, but let the weak sound strong. And I'm going to let this word keep me, make me free, change the way I think, and have the mind of Yahshua. Hamashiach. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, it says, Know you not that you are the bed, ha mishdash, of Yahweh, and that the ruah of Yahweh, it dwells in you. Yes. If you confess it, it must dwell in you. Others must see that there's something different about this daughter. Daughter, we, we must be more serious minded in this hour. You know, as you look at the corruption in this world, look at the corruption. You know, you have children. You know, really, you want you, you have beautiful daughters and beautiful sons, and you'd all like them to be married one day. And if you were to go out searching for a, a husband, or I'm just saying, we're not supposed to, but if you were just going out looking for uh, an itch for your daughter or an uh, itch off for your son, you couldn't find one. Mm -hmm. sure. You, you just couldn't find them. Because the world is doing its own thing. Everybody's lewd. Everybody thinks filthy. 
They don't even think about prayer. Oh, I'm going to pray for you, girl. Well, I mean, really, are you going to pray for me? Because really, I need prayer. And it's rare because brought it out more in a more deliberate way that you can understand. And it was simple. That you have to be, when you really pray, you have to be broken. Yes. You have to be broken. Sorry for you go in with a heavy heart mm -hmm. and say, yeah, I hate my evil ways. Yes, sir. Not my sisters, but my evil ways. Yes, when you are truly walking in truth, you won't do your sister evil. Mm -hmm. You won't do your sister evil. If she's doing wrong, you will, you, you're supposed to bring it out to her and say, you can't do that. Yes, That's mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. That's wrong, daughter. Can I tell these young daughters here, they say, well, you know, you too hard, well, fair. Well, can I tell you, no, I didn't birth them, but yet I did birth them. I've known all these young daughters since they were little in elementary school. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I correct. I tell them about keeping their homes clean. I tell them about working with their little ones. Mm -hmm. And then I tell them, because even though the teacher gives them homework, I say, mothers, I want you to sit down, and you see what they're learning. And if they're doing something wrong, you say, no, baby, that's not how you do that. So that's what I do with the daughters here. Yes, true. Do you ever uh, say you get frustrated or you ever share it with another sister? Why, sure I do. Yes, yes ma'am, I do. True. I'll be lying and say, I do. And that's why, because sometimes, you know, you get a little heavy. You want your daughter, yes. when you all come here, I want my daughters to represent me. True. You want me to be like you? Why, sure I do. Yes. As I'm striving to please Almighty Yahweh. And I have forsaken my wicked kinsmen, and I'm striving to do right, and I'm showing them true Ahava. Why well, sure my daughters a lot act just like me? They said they even look like you. Well, thank you. That's what I want. That's what I want. And that's what Yah wants. He wants us to look like Him, to act like Him, to think like Him in every situation. So there's nothing that we can't handle. There's nothing that we can't overcome if we know who we are in Yahshua, Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 17, it says, If any man defile the bed, him shall Yah destroy. For the bed of Yah is Kodash, is set apart, is not of the devil. Hallelujah. So we're set apart. We don't let anything come out of our mouth. We govern. We govern our Lashon. We govern. Before you speak, you think before you speak. Yes. We got to discipline this flesh. Yes. We're so used to doing things our way. <laughs> Speaking our mind. Yes. If you have the mind of Yahshua, you won't speak your mind because you know it. it's nothing. There's nothing there. It's like an empty wagon. It makes a lot of noise. Can I tell you, everybody knows how to talk filthy here. Mm -hmm. yes. Especially if you've been out there in the world. Mm -hmm. you, you know how to, and you know how to be mean and nasty. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's not what y'all's looking for. Mm -hmm. He's looking for humble doors. Mm -hmm. They know how to be submissive. Mm -hmm. Know how to receive correction. Mm -hmm. And you've got to correct also. Mm -hmm. And we've got to be, the age woman must be an example. Mm -hmm. It's time out for excuses. Mm -hmm. Say, well, I'm getting there and I'm working on it. No. Mm -hmm. We should already be this truth. You've been walking, listen to all you doors. You doors have been walking in truth 10 years or better. You, you're without excuse. We've been getting too much truth. Yahshua said after the fig tree, and we are the fig tree. If that fig tree, after three years, does not bring forth righteous fruit, he said cut it down and cast it into the fire. He's talking to us that hear the right, the righteousness of Almighty Yahweh, yes. and then we don't do it. We just make excuses. Yes. Well, I would have, but she did this and she didn't. No. We got to do righteously all the time. We got to stand strong all the time. Every situation. Not just sometime. Well, I was strong two months ago. Okay, what about today? What about yesterday? We must be faithful every day. We've got to show as as faithful as Yahshua is to us, we must be that faithful too. Yes, true. It's time out for excuses. Yes. Who's gonna be on? Who's on Yahshua's side? Who's gonna stand on his side? Yeah. 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 Who's gonna be faithful yeah. when he comes back looking for that ish? That be that woman. He's gonna say, you know, I'm looking. Where is she? When he comes back for the bride, 
Are you going to say, well, I would have been ready, but that husband you gave me, he said, it's shalom to live with him. Stay there. Stay to be quiet. Watch him out. Yes. And if it's not shalom to be with the man that you chose, you're equally on yoke, then leave. He said, well, can I tell you, when you don't know, that's a different ball game. If you're, you marry a man, and you're walking in truth, and he's not in truth, but you know the truth. You know the truth, you've been walking in truth 10 years, you should not. You're not supposed to be unequally you. But if you just start walking this way, don't listen to me. I ain't talking about the Jesus way, I'm talking about the your way. You just start walking in truth, and you married a man, and you didn't know any better. Y'all understand that. So if it's shalom to live with that man, you don't try to tell him how to walk in Yah. You be quiet. You let him see the light of Yahshua in your name. That's what you do. Because we can't make no man to do nothing. That was the case, I guess I have breath cleaning the house. Don't put that right there. Why did you put that there? You mean to tell me you didn't wash your dishes after you finish eating? No. So you stay to be quiet. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to clean. We're supposed to cook. That's what we're supposed to do. No, we don't go out seeking no career. No. We don't. When y'all said, come out from among them, be separate, he said, you want to leave the job. You're not supposed to be out there. Because when I'm telling you, when you're out there, well, you know what, I'm out of shape. Ain't nobody looking at me. The devil always has somebody just for you when you think nobody's looking. <laughs> you start being very flirtatious. Oh, yeah, that's what they do. Well, I ain't got no shape. There's somebody for everybody. And the devil will try to set you up. That's why y'all didn't want us out there amongst you. He wants you at home, working with your children. Yes. That's what he wants for you. Yes. And then when you have time to make time for this, for scripture, this is our daily legend. Mm -hmm. It is. We should pick this up, apply it to our nephew. No, don't worry about nobody else. You make sure you apply it to you. We as age women, we must have this in our message. Mm -hmm. We must. So that we can instruct these young daughters. You know, sometimes you may have to go out and tra travel. You go to another town, there's young daughters. They may not have an age woman among them. Mm -hmm. And then they may seek you out and say, could you tell me more about this living way? Because mm -hmm. this is the only way to live. When you're not living this way, you're dead. Mm -hmm. And you're trespassing mm -hmm. and sin. Hallelujah. How do we keep our bed? How do we keep it? Do we keep it by studying eight hours a day? Do we keep it by staying on our knees eight hours? How do we keep our bed? In times like this, really, we're in, really, I'll say, crucial hours. Just think about that wonderful president we have. That's where I call him gangster. He is. He's real gangster. To me, it's like a little kid. I got just what I wanted. I don't really know what to do with it, but I got just what I wanted. So these people are going to do what I say, or I'll put, I'll, he said, I'll be better than him. Hallelujah. So we need to keep our bed, and we must know how to keep it. Can I tell you, like I said, this is our daily legend, and it will tell you right here in the book. I'm going to go to Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. It says, only let your conversation be as it becomes the message of Yahshua. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in the Ruach, with one mind striving together for the imuna of the message. We must govern our conversation. So if you talk filthy, <coughs> he can't dwell in it. That's true. If your conversation is always filthy, as I even said earlier, always talking about foolishness, you think Yahshua is dwelling in it? Mm -hmm. Because he wasn't like that. He was about his father's business. He was about his father's business. So are we about our father's business? Yes. We must govern our conversations. It's not all about jokes and and games and the soap operas and it's not about that. 
we don't have, can I tell you, me as a woman, I, even when uh, we ever came to this community, this lifestyle, that wasn't my thing, watching television. As a young girl, as a young girl, trying to please my mother, I didn't have time for television. In the evening, I said around about 8 o'clock, I could watch television. If I was, put, after I got out of school, most of them I would have to go get my little sister from daycare, pick up the other one from school, walk home, get the dinner going. After I got my dinner going, I would have to do my homework. After I did my homework, who do you think had dishes? I had dishes. Mm -hmm. After I did the dishes, I would sometimes do laundry. I hated ironing. To this day, I hate ironing. No, I don't. I do iron my clothes, but it's not the way Ray irons my clothes. I mean, he puts the creases and everything just looks so fresh. I hate ironing. If you want to iron for me, y'all will rock you. But I hate ironing. So I had to iron everybody's clothes. You know, I made my baby brother take the trash out, but I did the bulk of the work. So I really didn't have time for television. But I did like the Flintstones. So why, most of the time if I was cooking, I would run in there and look at the Flintstones. I like the Jetsons. So I would look at that. Even when I became grown, I liked the Jetsons and Flintstones. So I would have to squeeze that in, but I always thought soap operas was foolishness. I just thought it was foolishness. And my sister would record the soap opera so when she got home, she wouldn't miss it. And I would fuss at her too. I said, that is so silly. I said, it's not real. It's not what life I say, everybody's sleeping with everybody. I said, what's exciting about that? So I just wasn't in, I just had too much on my plate. And today I still have too much on my plate. That's why I told y'all for this place. This is how y'all yeah. wants his people to live. Yeah. That we fellowship. Yeah. We pray together. When we're going through something, can I tell you? When we pray together, we overcome it. There's nothing too hard that we can't overcome. So that's what we do, we pray together. We have to understand the ways of God. It's not like the world. Mm -hmm, yeah. Prayer is so significant. Mm -hmm. And can I tell you, when you've truly been made free, when you truly have an experience with Almighty Yahweh, there is a brokenness there. There is weeping, much weeping. Because you think that he thought of somebody so filthy as I to make me free. No, he's not going to kick your wicked, dirty heart down. He's not. He said, I knock at the door. You got to let. You must let him come. He's not going to kick it down. You must, not, must acknowledge, I am wicked. I'm filthy. I don't know your ways, y'all. But if you come in, if you let him come in, he will give you a shepherd to lead and guide you in all You just got to hear the message. Hallelujah. You must hear it. I want to go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. It says, What? Know you not that your body is the bed of Hamish Dash, of the Ruah HaKodesh, which is in you, which you have of Yahweh, and you are not your own. So you've been bought with a price. Yes. If you say you know Yahweh, Yahshua, You've been bought with a price. Yah says, I'm an austere man. He said, I reap what I sow not. So he's coming back for food. It's okay, you know, daughter, you know, I had you work with these little ones to teach them how to sing. You got frustrated, you got bored, you say it wasn't enough, don't nobody see me. I'm not being seen, nobody's exalting me. It's okay, take that from her, give it to another. That's true. That already has 10 gifts. And let them do that. They'll praise me, they'll live for me, they'll be an example. That's what y'all want. He wants examples. Yes. You can't want to be no more than what you are. True. I said, well, who are you? I'm nobody. I'm nothing. I'm nothing. Hallelujah. I have struggles just like you all. But that's what prayer does. It helps you press past those struggles. Hallelujah. When you sincerely realize how frail you are, how weak you are, he'll come in. He'll show you. I'm, I'm your strength. Just trust and lean on me. Hallelujah. We want to talk about Hannah. Hallelujah. 
and the results of Hannah's prayer. You know, I think about her, how she wanted a child so badly. You know, and at one time in my life, I did too. I told her, yeah, I didn't have to birth one, but yet I still have daughters, I do, and sons. And you know, I take great honor in my sons because they truly love me. There's nothing that I would ask for that they would not do. I just don't ask. I don't ask. But they still brought me. If I need something or our assistance with anything, they come running. Now, I did want 10 sons. No, I didn't want any daughters. I wanted 10 sons. And y'all said, let me knock her down some notches because she's going to take pride in those boys. So, no, she's not ready. And I wasn't ready. I thought I was. I wanted 10 sons. And I wanted a big house in the country. And I wanted a garden. And I wanted to bake and take care of my son. And yet I have sons that love me great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even I watched Ray out when he uh, instructed a young man here. It's such a beautiful thing. I mean, honor him. Hallelujah. So I'm not lacking anything. And over years I have been blessed. I have a birth one, but yet I birthed me. I told y'all for Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Hannah's prayer unto Yahweh, it brought results. First Samuel, first verse, I mean, yeah, first chapter, verse 9. And Hannah, her, her name means kindness. She was kind. She rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, a place of rest. And after they had drunk, now Eli the Kohan sat upon a seat by a post by the great tabernacle of Yahweh. Now this is a, a priest and you know, he took notice of those that came in and you know watched those that prayed. And she was in bitterness of her nephew, and she prayed to Yahweh and she wept sore. Mm -hmm. Sore means to be, she was in great heaviness, she was discomforted, hallelujah. And heaviness, the word heaviness means severe, difficult. She really, she was in pain of her death. She really was. Mm -hmm. When I came to truth, I was like it because I realized as I heard the messenger, the messenger, how bad I was. Mm -hmm. How bad I was. And when you realize how bad you are, there will come a great change. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't walk. Can I tell you, there's no way bitter and sweet. Righteousness and unrighteousness can walk together. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to use this as an example. Like I said, I have a sister. I had two. One is deceased. But I have another sister. If Nancy and I were walking every day, and she's of the world, mm -hmm. and her conversation is going to be about nothing because that's what she knows. Poor. And she's talking that way every day, and I never stop her. Don't you think I'm going to get caught mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't have no strength to tell her to be quiet. If I don't have the strength, I need to separate myself. But if you're walking with somebody that's violent, then don't you know you're going to get corrupt? That's true. That conversation coming out of her every day, that's going to corrupt you. Hallelujah. So as Hannah prayed, she was heavy in her leg. She was depressed. <coughs> There was no gladness because she wanted this soul. But can I tell you, she had always purpose in her man. I'm going to give this child mm -hmm. back to all my young right now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let me give you Proverbs for an example of heaviness of lead. Proverbs 14 and 13. says, even in laughter, the lead is sorrowful. Mm -hmm. And the end of that joy is heaviness. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hannah wept sore. I want to go to Genesis 50 and 10. Told totally you. Yeah. Bless you, God. Yeah. We're talking about the heaviness of her land. And they came to the threshing floor. This is Joseph in Pharaoh's house, which is beyond Jordan. And there they moan with a great and very sore lamentation. 
and he made a mourning for his father seven days. So Yosef's father had passed. And because he was heavy, he was heavy hearted, there was a great mourning. So when you go into the bed to pray, there, there, you should be serious minded. It's not a time to look at what somebody else has on and you checking out Sister Floretha's shoes. It's about being serious when you come into the bed. You have to get that in your children. They don't know any better. Children, they just think everything is about playing, having fun, no matter what. So you have to train them, you have to teach them, you have to instruct them. When we go into the bed, we're going to hear from Almighty Lord. So is that, can I tell you, you got to discipline them. Let me tell you about Sister Cole. Let me stop for the period right there. You cannot be afraid to discipline your children because Torah commands that. So when your children get unruly, well, I can't spank little baby because her legs so pretty. Mm -hmm. That's the mindset of the world. We don't think like that. Mm -hmm. You take a sister Cole. There was a man who was on his name was Evangelist Hartsfield. He told sister when she got when sister Cole would take the child as soon as she got it, the child would stop crying. She was two. She was two years old. He said, the next time you take her out, you give her something. You give her something for that. He said, you get your little king switch. He said, you switch her legs. He said, that would, but can I tell you? Can I tell you all something? Listen, I want all you sisters to listen. Because nobody's child is any better than anybody else's. She took the child out. I'll say for about four services. She broke the child. She broke her. Because you, when she would get up, the child would automatically stop crying. Because she would take her out and give her something to eat. When he told her what to do, Sister Colt blessed that man of God because he told her what was right. The scripture said, beat them, beat them, and don't spare them for their crime. No, I'll say beat them every day for every little thing. We have the mind of y'all sure you have to govern. The times we just sit down and you talk to them. That's all you just talk to them. After that week, you knew what you did was wrong. I had given him a mentor the other day in service. He said, that's all you get. And I'm looking, I said, mm -hmm. Right away, his eyes got even larger than what they were, and the tears just started to fall. Well, no, that didn't make me happy. It made me mad. Mm -hmm. I said, if you don't stop that, I'm going to send you back to your daddy. He said, oh, no, no, I don't want to go to him. I said, I'm like, stop, I don't have any more. I started saying, I could see if that was keeping you awake, but it doesn't keep you awake. You eat a pack of Mentos or a pack of Skittles, and you go to sleep. And you snore so loud, you got Candy laughing at you. She's laughing at him because he's snoring so loud. So you, we have to learn to discipline our children. The world tell you, okay, well, no, uh, let me, let me, let me see what you, you need to put him on. Really, no, give him some Prozac. Put him on that. No, you take uh, what is it? He has a cell phone. Take the cell phone. No, he shouldn't have no cell phone. Can I? And then I, I was in Walmart. I'll say about three weeks ago. And there's, this lady's ringing up my eye and she says, uh, I just got off my break. I got to go to this school and pick up my uh, little boy for misbehaving in school. So the woman said, well, take something from him. You know, he probably has a lot of games. Take one of them games. She said, I already did that. She said, well, take his cell phone. She said, he doesn't have one. She said, I don't have money to spend like that. She said, that's all right. She said, he's going to wait. She said, he's going to sit in the principal's office till I get there. She said, I'm not rushing either. She said, because they're going to deduct that from my pay. And, you, I, you know, usually women think that you got to buy this one a cell phone. To me, that is so silly. It is a silly. Well, you don't own a phone, Raphael? Well, no, I don't. I'm at home. Ray, I has one. If I need it, I can use his. We have a community phone here, so when I need to call, Oh, whole bam, I get on the cell. I mean, I get on, use the phone in the dining hall. Mm -hmm. If I need a whole VC to bake something and bring, I just call on the phone in the dining hall. Mm -hmm. That's all. True. No, I don't play games. No, I don't text. Well, what do you do? I cook, I clean, and I love y'all. Mm -hmm. And if I need to use the phone, I, I have one in my home. I keep the ring off the one in my home. So if it rings, somebody in the dining hall, they'll pick it up. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, oh, Raphael. If it, is, if it is an emergency, 
all these folks, somebody will get in touch with me. No, I don't play games. I don't have time for that. I'm, I'm supposed to be a mature woman, so you put away childish things. I'm not talking about you that don't live. I'm talking about the ones that live. I don't, I don't do that. It's a different ballgame. You probably wouldn't have to have a cell phone because you, you know, if you don't have a phone in your house, it's probably cheaper. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, how do you know things? We got a radio. You got, uh, if you have internet, there's nothing that you don't know. And if you need to know, somebody else around here will know and they'll tell. So I don't miss out on anything. Hallelujah. Well, how did Yahshua do? Did, did he have a cell phone? How, how did Yahshua, did he have a, a chariot of horses? No, he didn't even walk. Everywhere he went. This is a lazy generation. We don't even want to walk to pick up a piece of paper off the floor. You kick it to the side and you pray that somebody come by you and pick it up the floor. We have made ourselves like that. We can't put that on your shoe. We have made ourselves like that. We have no, can I tell you, and, and, and I'm, yes, I'm just going to say this, because every woman should energize herself. Every woman should. If you don't have nobody to motivate, you got to motivate yourself. True. Then you got to put people in your life to motivate you. Yes. Even before we came here, I, you know, I used to walk, and then I, I used to run, and then I started walking, and I would watch the older sisters in the assembly. Those that were active and those that weren't active. And there was a sister that's here with us now, Hope Visa. She walked off, and she made her schedule every day was to walk. And she wanted to keep her only daughter in shape so she'd make her walk too. What's wrong with that? I, can I tell, like I said, I wouldn't want my daughter to be overweight. I would. So you have to teach her. You can't eat everything. Everything new on the market is not the best to put in you. Everything new on the market is to make money. Yes. We have to understand this. So you can't eat it. And your body don't know how to expel that. True. That's why I don't eat Oreo cookies every day, even though I'd like to. I don't eat Oreo cookies every day. The, to me, that is one of the, no, 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 let me take it back. m and peanut candy would be my world's, the best dessert to me. But I do like Oreo cookies, I do. But it's not the best thing to put in there. It's not to put, that's not the best thing to eat every, once a week. So I wouldn't do that. To feel healthy, you have to put in healthy things. Yes, yes. Mostly greens. And I'm telling you, I ate some greens from the raised bed the other day. And it was after six. I don't like to eat greens after six, not cook, because they will energize you. Yes. I only ate three leaves. No, I didn't go wash them and, and sanitize. No, I didn't. I got those greens. I ate three. I broke the stem off. The stems are delicious. But I and I ate three leaves. And all I said within less than 20 minutes, I had a burst of energy. I didn't know why. I just realized what I had eaten. I started cleaning. Things that I normally don't do in the evening, I don't go and clean the bathroom. Scrubbing, I don't do that in the evening, not in the evening. And that's what I did. And I was trying to figure out where did I get that energy from. Okay, do I need to stop? I can't hear you. you oh, so the, uh, I ate those greens and they gave me energy. And the energy comes from the sun. They get that sun. You see when you water the greens, when they droop over, when you water them, they start to stand up. But the leaves, they go right up directly to the sun. That's how they, your plants, when you water your plants, they'll stand up. But when the sun shines on them, they start, the leaves will go directly towards the sun. So when you want energy, eat those greens. Not cook, eat them raw. And they're delicious. No, I'm not promoting the raw food. I say eat the greens raw. That's all I say. Cooked greens are tough for you too. But when you eat greens raw, you want to be energized. Eat them like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to get back to this. Um, totally young. Just read that. All right, 1 Samuel 1 and 11. Hannah vowed a vow unto Almighty Yah. If you will indeed look on my affliction of your handmaid and remember me and not forget your handmaid but will give to your handmaid a man child then I will give him to you Yahweh 
all the days of my life, and there should no razor come upon his head. She vowed a vow unto Almighty Yahweh. And I told you, daughters, I think it was last week, when you walk in righteousness, Yah's word is true. Yah is true to the test. We, just, we, we must just be found faithful. You can ask what you will. For many years I did not understand that scripture. When you commit unto Almighty Yahweh, and you ask according to Torah truth, He will grant you your desire. He will grant you your desire. She said, Yah. Her prayer got her great results. She asked for a man child. And Yah gave her a man child. You say, oh, well, I prayed and I asked for two daughters and he gave me two daughters. Can I tell you, daughters, listen to me. Yah hears not the prayer of the unrighteous. He does not. You go out and do something in sin. No, it's not because you got that little boy because you prayed. That's why he just gave you whatever he gave you. But Yah does not hear the prayer of the unrighteous. He does not. Even when you're walking in truth and you have an all against an a hope and you let the sun go down on your wrath and you say, well, I prayed last night. He didn't hear it. He didn't hear your prayer. So, Yah, well, can I tell you, Yah is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap that. You do someone unjust and you take it lightly, you're going to reap what you sow. I've learned that over the years, daughters. I have learned that over the years. We have to understand this truth, this living truth, it'll make you free if you lay it. Yeah, it doesn't hear the prayer of the righteous, and when you're walking in error, he does not hear your prayer. He heard Anna's prayer. She was set apart, she walked in righteousness, and he granted her a son. Hallelujah, way. And she made a vow. And she said, I will give this son back unto you. And she did. Hallelujah. I want to go to affliction. Like I said, when you go into the bed to pray, you have to afflict your nephews. So scripture says some things come by fasting and prayer. Now that's something we all don't like because I don't like it. I don't. But I know sometimes to get a prayer through that I just deny myself. It's okay, Rafael, you didn't, you know, I just didn't feel that the prayer was answered or the situation was still continuing as it was. So then you fight. It's okay, I'm not going to eat today. From sundown to time, I'm not going to eat. I'm going to flick this nephew, and I'm going to get on my face before Almighty God. But affliction, an example of how we must be afflicted in trusting Yah, the prayer of Yahweh Yahshua, look at all the elements of prayer and affliction. Withdrawal, kneeling down, allow. Lucas 22:42, saying, Abba, if you will, be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Before Yahshua went to the stake, he had to fast. His burden, it became a burden. I'm going to have to die, I'm going to have to lay down my life. But he said, not my will, God is, but your will be done. He was in agony. He was in pain. He afflicted his own nephews. So as he did, we must do. Yes. Are we not, we say he's living in us. So as he did, we must do. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more scripture verse. Well, maybe two. And there appeared a Melikin to Yahshua from the Shemaya and strengthening Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we go to prayer, 
Let us learn to have a serious mind, to be heavy hearted, to cast down everything that's not like Him, the cares of the world, and seek Him with the right who are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will talk more about prayer on this week. We told you all for all things for His faithfulness. For everybody that is here, we have been rejoicing and celebrating the feast days of all Y'all, Barack, y'all have an excellent young, this day, Yeshua's day. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.